You want to know who is to blame for the Washington gridlock? Senator Rand Paul says he knows. The Senate in Washington is run by Harry Reid. Republicans get nothing, no ideas. You are not represented in the U.S. Senate. Even though you have a great senator and Senator Grassley, he doesn't get any of his ideas into law right now. None. Zero. Why? Because they're afraid. They're afraid to have people vote. Right now, Senator Rand Paul is in Iowa. He pulled over on the side of the road and is joining us from a cornfield. Nice to see you, Senator. Hey, Greta. Thanks for having me. Senator, um, you say that the gridlock, you uh, say it is uh, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid. I should note that I read over the weekend, New York Times says that Senator Harry Reid is not putting bills on the floor for political reasons. So apparently they agree with you on that. But why, I mean, why do the Democratic senators not want to vote? They can win. They got the numbers on all the votes. Well, they can win electorally, you know, in the Senate, but they're worried about the election and they're worried that the people won't like the way they're voting, which sounds a little bit like, you know, they really are embarrassed of their philosophy. But really, for about a year, they have given up on voting in the Senate. Nothing really of substance has happened in a year, maybe two years. They don't allow any amendments from Republicans. They don't want the give and take or any kind of bipartisanship because they're petrified that Republicans might have them vote on a gun issue or some kind of issue that Southern Democrats don't want to vote on. It, do you get no sense that Senator Harry Reid has any sort of guilty conscience in the sense that he at least, I mean, things should be at least be voted on. That's part of a democracy, whether you're for things or against things. He, it's all about winning with him? Well, to me, it's disappointing because I've actually tried to work with the Democrats on several issues, criminal justice reform, lowering the taxes on money coming home from overseas. I've tried very hard to find uh, ground with the Democrats on these issues, and yet they won't allow any votes. But how do we make progress if we don't have any votes? I don't know. I read a couple articles today, Senator, saying that uh, you have said that you have never uh, voted to cut any aid to Israel. Um, and now you're saying that that's untrue. What is it? You voted to uh, cut aid to Israel sometime, or you wanted to, or you have not? Yeah, well, I've never uh, targeted Israel for any aid cuts, never voted to cut any aid to Israel. And the interesting thing is I've spent the last two months trying to cut aid to Hamas and the Palestinian Authority, and people seem to be trying to create their own story here. But I've been on the Senate floor three times in the last two weeks challenging the Democrats to say, you know what, Hamas should not get any foreign aid. That's the real story here. Anything else really that's being brought up I think is uh, someone trying to create a story. All right. Well, I know that you voted last week for the $225 million for the uh for, for the Iron Dome for Israel, but let me just make me make my question more precise. Did you ever try to get a vote on an amendment to deny aid in any way to uh, Israel? No, and I think it's misinterpreted. I've had votes and budgets that would have reduced overall foreign aid. Some people have interpreted it saying this, oh, this is to deny aid to Israel, when in fact, my inclination and my propositions have always been to strengthen our ties to Israel. So really, people misinterpret it. I do think foreign aid, we don't have enough money to continue foreign aid to everyone all the time. But I've said repeatedly, I think we ought to start with the countries that are burning our flag, start with the countries that hate us. And I frankly, I've been to Israel and I don't see anybody there burning our flag. So really, I'm for slowing down the aid, saying we don't have enough, attaching conditions, making sure Hamas never gets any aid. So all I'm asking is for some of these outlets that are unfriendly outlets that they would report the truth, that I've spent a lot of time trying to reduce aid to Hamas and the Palestinian Authority, and if they report otherwise, they're reporting something that's really not accurate. Uh, well, uh, there's no question you're in Iowa, that beautiful cornfield behind you, and there's been a video that has gone somewhat viral among the media, at least, in which you are sitting having lunch with uh, Congressman King. And uh, suddenly, uh, some some young person comes up to him and says the person's a dreamer and engages in sort of a controversial conversation with uh, Congressman King about being a dreamer. You shake the hand, and then and then you are seen getting up after you have a bite of your hamburger and grabbing your drink as though you're trying to get away. What's the explanation for this video? <laughs> Well, now you know my life. You know my life on the campaign trail. 
But about five minutes before that, or two minutes before that, the video doesn't show that another reporter came up and said, will you do an interview? And I said, I need to take a couple more bites and we'll do an interview. And then I was told we had to leave and I had to do the interview. So actually I stand about 10 feet from those, those people who were doing sort of a kamikaze interview. And I stood 10 feet from them and did another interview. And you know me, I've always been open to discussing immigration. I'm very open to discussing that I think there should be some kind of immigration reform, but I think you can't do it without first securing the border. And that's the problem with the president doing this unlawfully, president doing this on his own act. Oh, I will act. I must, I, I will make this choice because people will not act and saying he's just a pen and a phone. I am very much opposed to the president making policy instead of saying Congress makes the laws, he gets to sign them. Senator, nice to see you in that beautiful state of Iowa behind you. I love <laughs> Iowa. Enjoy Iowa. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Greta.